Today, we find ourselves in a context of ever-increasing tensions defined by challenges that are global in nature and which many governments around the world seem dedicated to resolving with an outdated understanding of security. It is our responsibility, like that of our forefathers, to help shape and promote the adoption of new norms that redefine security. These norms must be grounded in an absolute compassion for the human condition and based on the guiding principle that one nation's security cannot be achieved at the expense of another nation. Basically, every initiative that would try to seek peace and dialogue instead of confrontation and conflict would be an initiative in the spirit of common security. And every initiative that are putting human needs also at center and try to find uh, solutions to well, these basic needs and security needs of human beings would also be an initiative in the spirit of common security. Stop the believing that military will solve any problem. Have you forgotten these 20 years of the fight against terror? Has military solved any problem? No. So negotiations, trust building, sitting together, looking for the moderation and mediators, thinking on small steps of human development. That is for me in this horrible situation of confrontation, the next steps. Because through dialogue, through negotiation, you will be able to solve conflict. We believe that peace will bring security. War and conflict will not bring security to any nation. We see that there is a role for parliamentarians that they have to play and engage. The world has suffered a lot of many conflicts during the last century. And we believe that there is a role parliamentarians should take a lead in when it's come to solving conflict by promoting peace. We believe that we need champion for peace everywhere. And we need to invest in creating a new generation of parliamentarians who are willing to sacrifice for peace, uh, like what others are doing to sacrifice for creating conflict and wars. I'd say that uh, the most important prerequisite for the concept of common security to function is, of course, the realization of the concept itself and the commitment to the concept itself from all parties. So it needs the political will to truly cooperate and also to uh, admit and realize that uh, security is something that we create in common. The realization that uh, you cannot achieve your own or your people's security by inflicting insecurity on someone. That is the starting point to uh, make common security function. Parliamentarians can use the initiative, can start a discussion, can create subcommittees where you discuss elements of a new structure, can also develop new partnerships and relations and get new contacts over the block confrontation. I think this is the role parliamentarians should play in a very positive sense. Parliamentary diplomacy is a much underutilized form of diplomacy in the modern world. And it's something that I think parliamentarians need to be confident about their role working with colleagues across borders and actually we need to make sure that our parliaments are equipped uh, with the right people uh, with the right expertise and actually a, a daily understanding and so the idea that we don't have uh, people in their 20s and 30s in parliaments uh, with their particular generations understanding and expertise of these issues because remember companies that are leading uh, in these sectors, leading in the sector of digital uh, and online spaces, are often led by young entrepreneurs they, who've, who've developed these technologies themselves. And so we need to make sure, I think, that we have the space in our parliaments for young people. The paradigm shift in understanding of security is strongly connected to the paradigm shift in education. 
uh, the traditional approaches in education is teaching, you know, traditional wisdom to the next generation. But the traditional wisdom sometimes doesn't fit with the current changes, right? So how can we invite everyone into the learning process together? And how can we build the learning process as a commoning process of everybody? It's really, really important to change education system as a whole. Trust building means starting to put again negotiations as a key point on the political agenda. We have more to think, more to develop, more to exchange than we believe. Because the world is changing so dramatically and we are staying more or less in the old times. And to develop a new explanation for the situation, I think we need IPU, we need IPB, and we need all these organizations which are open for trust building and cooperation. That, I think, is a challenge of our times. Well, look, common security, one of the arches on which common security is built is precisely things like confidence building, uh, trusting others, uh, seeing the actual historical record uh, of how people have behaved, instead of having a threat perception which is based on which just is based on your own insecurities as opposed to facts sometimes or realities now i'll tell you the first stumbling block on this again it's to do with the theory of international relation based on realist arguments where they separate the domestic from the foreign and they always used to say that domestic policy has very little to do with foreign policy which is completely the opposite. In fact, foreign policy is completely influenced by domestic considerations. And it's also quite interesting to me, at least, it's okay to discuss the cost of everything except the cost of military defense. It's naive to believe that we can create peace and security through military answers, that more of armaments and more technologically advanced nuclear weapons will not create security in the long run. It will be a false feeling of security in the short run. But, uh, and that could of course be important for, for the populations, but as uh, political leaders, we must also think of the long run and invest in the long-term security and thereby in cooperation on all levels of, in society. The political representatives, they do have their duty to deal with the tax from the taxpayers and how they need to be responsible for using those economic uh, resources for the common goods. They don't link defense expenditure with social security expenditures. The fact that if defense expenditures decrease, the social benefits can actually increase. The social net can increase. And I think politicians need to explain this and take this up and also understand it themselves. They themselves have a better chance of being elected if they can deliver to their constituencies the social nets and social welfare. I think people with uh, decision-making power need to redefine themselves with their um, source of representation. Um, representation of someone's political determination is uh, required to be uh, towards common goods, not specific groups of interest. Common goods means um, your role is to make peace everyone's, not for the certain group of people. So knowing whom you are representing is the key for the paradigm shift. Because at the end, the people that we represent will be the one who are suffering. So it's our responsibility to find the solution for all these conflicts and engage with the government and the executive to encourage them to find a solution and to make peace as a priority on their agenda in solving all conflicts. The positives that I took from uh, this agenda of, of common security uh, is really laying down some principles about peace, about 
common security being my country needs to be safe and secure and so does your country. And I think sometimes when we're in conflict situations, we see good and bad and we see uh, the need for winners and losers. And that is actually a driver uh, of conflict in itself. And so I think the common security agenda gets to the heart of uh, peace and trying to ensure that we have a safe uh, world to live in for all people because it seeks to lay the foundations for that uh, before we even get to conflict. And it, really it's about making sure that there is uh, internet, there are international institutions that are functioning and that we're talking, we, we're using diplomacy and that for all of us we have each other's peace and security on our mind, not just our own. You can't separate the security of any country or any region from others. We have to work hard, especially parliamentarian, to engage in the common security that, that will bring security to everyone. You can't exclude anyone. We need to engage everyone, bring security, stability, and prosperity to everyone without excluding anyone. This should be the mandate of the international community and parliamentarian. He should, should take a lead in engaging and promoting the common security. Okay, we have a choice here, mutual survival or mutual destruction. What, what shall we choose? The, the answer to that question uh, should be easy. At least it's for me.